What is up, crypto hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack our cryptocurrency and blockchain, NFT, and metaverse education. If that sounds good to you. Slap a like on this video, it gets it out to more people, and be subscribed with notifications on for everything there is around simplified educational content in the Web3 space. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be going over five tips on how to weather a bear market. I have been through two different bear markets. It was in 2013, 14, 2017 and 18, and now in 2022 and 23. We are seeing a lot of activity going on, a lot of ups and downs, and there are a ton of people out there that have come into this space over the last 24 months and are wondering what's going on, my portfolio is getting wrecked, and what do I do? Now, if you're new to the space as a whole, maybe even this year, welcome. I love having newcomers come in, of course, to have conversations with just like this and just be able to talk through some of the basics of the space, including the cycles. And the most important part to understand here is to turn off the kind of trading Twitter, trading crypto Twitter, if you will, where there's people that are actively trading this style market. And what you should really be focusing on is the halving. For people that are brand new to the space, the Bitcoin halving is a fantastic fundamental indicator for where we are in the cycle. Bitcoin was the first. It is a very big indicator for the entire industry that is crypto. And 2024 is when the next halving is scheduled to happen. If you're brand new to the space as a whole and don't know what that means, the halving itself, it means that the amount of Bitcoins that are rewarded to miners for supporting the proof of work network gets cut in half. And that is the beauty of the design of Bitcoin. We are more than two years away from the previous halving and we are less than two years away from the next halving. Somewhere around, I believe, April to June, of 2024 is when the next one is projected to happen. And this is done in a certain block uh, where it happens. Plenty of different Bitcoin having clocks out there that you can check out and see when it's supposed to happen. And the last one was very exciting. A lot of live streams, a lot of people were very hyped about it. And what the most important part here is, is how you're going to protect yourself in the meantime. And I get a ton of questions about this. So I wanted to go through five different steps that you can take and little indicators that I've used over the years to not only be successful during a downturn in these markets, but also finding some really great teams and some gems. And that leads me to the first point. Find the great teams out there that are going to keep building regardless of price go up, price go down. Find them and find the ones that are consistent. The ones that are still releasing updates, they're deploying new code, they're actually making moves all throughout this downturn. They're not rattled. They are heads down building. Those are the people following the developers is always going to be a great route, but those are the people that you need to go to. You need to check on what they're doing. You need to support them and make sure you're part of the, the community there. And that leads us to the next piece, find community, find people that are aggregating around a team, they're aggregating around a mission and just become part of it. See how you can help and just make sure that they are releasing new things on a regular basis. See who's backing them, make sure that they are you know, actual operators. What happens in bull markets is people that come into a, a, an emerging market like crypto, often are young people that have never run a business before. They have no idea what a balance sheet is or running a PL, how to hire, how to maintain, or how to manage a team. And they basically just cut and run, AKA a rug. And this is something that is an issue, but it happens organically every single cycle. There's always gonna be that in 2017. It was ICOs in 2013. It was a lot of forks that were happening from Litecoin and Bitcoin. And then you got Mt. Gox and you got all this chaos back then. That leads me to my next point here, which is stay away from copies. Now, for people that watch this channel from the NFT space that are always trolling on OpenSea, all you have to do to see copies is go through the rankings page and you will see cats, dogs, monkeys, apes, all different types of NFTs that are just forking and creating these different assets. 
and this can go far uh, to a certain extent, but this happened in 2017 and 2013 where you had people that were just forking a previous idea that worked and they're applying a little, maybe a nuance to it, uh, but ultimately this vacuums value from some of the actual builders out there. And if you just go to the rankings on OpenSea, you will see you know, a lot of these different <laughs> kind of forks and just iterations of things that were successful. And this backdraft of that, uh, you know, funding will go away. And not saying that all these projects are gonna collapse, but 95 plus percent of them will. They will go to zero and that's just the harsh truth. And to be even more aggressive and controversial here, it's actually a good thing that these do go out. And that's nothing against the teams, that's nothing against the investors or anything like that. But ultimately what you need to have is focus when you're doing disruptive and innovative things. For the few projects that did trigger in a beautiful market in the NFT space, those need the focus. Those need to be supported. Those need people that are actively out there sharing it and just act actively moving it, moving the needle. The copies of that, they made money, millions and millions of dollars, good for them. But all of those millions of dollars were what could have gone to the focus of these builders. A lot of different iterations going out, and I know that some of them are great. Uh, of course, I'm getting a lot of uh, hate for that, but you do have to laser focus on uh, a few. Next up, we have following fund wallet activity. And this one may sound a little weird, but on Etherscan, you can actually follow the wallets of very famous funds. So if you can figure out which wallet is attached to which investors, and you set a notification and let, you know, let to let you know when they're making an investment, you can really do a pretty incredible job of following some of the brilliant minds in the space. And this is something that a lot of projects have sort of tried to pioneer, but ultimately you can just go right on chain and see it. So Etherscan, you can go follow different people. I highly recommend just watching what some of these really famous wallets do during downturns. And maybe they're not the best equipped or best suited to weather a downturn, but if you're following five or six or seven wallets that are very well known in the space, you can really see where there's overlap. You can see where two or three out of those five make a same investment. Go find that team, research the team, figure out what, what makes the most sense for you and do your own research, of course. Next one is stablecoin yield. Now, a lot of people got spooked from the Luna UST collapse, and it's very important to know that not every stablecoin is the same. They're not all a you know algorithmically backed <laughs> token. So find a stablecoin that is, you know, very secure like USDC or uh, GUSD from Gemini. Find one that is very secure and you can allocate some capital to it, not financial advice, but that is way better than a savings account. And you have the ability to earn in some cases like 5%, 4%, 6% on money that's just sitting there in interest payments. There's various services that are doing that right now. And I know that that landscape is changing quite a bit, uh, but ultimately that is a very good strategy to earn just a modest you know, 5% on money that's just sitting there that's considered dry powder and you can take a leap into a great team or a project that you find very innovative and that you think is going to really thrive during a downturn or a bear market. So to recap, all five of these are to look for a team that's consistent, that is, you know, actually moving the needle and has, you know, good backers and they have a track record and they are going to continuously execute. Look for those first. Second, we said find community community is king in this space. And that is basically just a critical mass of users that are very excited about it. And they aren't going anywhere. They don't get spooked easily. And it is just a vibrant way of following where those teams are, because a lot of people can kind of come to a consensus that the teams are going to continuously execute. And this is such a great way of finding that. So you don't have to just do it on your own. You can find and follow the communities of this to track consistency, keep the team accountable and just following suit. 
Next one is following the fun wallet activity. Really a fan of this one. Do your research on that. Follow on Etherscan. See who's making investments where, which funds are attached to which wallets, which projects they're moving their money into. That's uh, a great way of doing it. Staying away from forks is a very, very important concept here. Everybody learned their lesson in 2013 and 2017 from investing in coins that were just forks of each other. And it just, you know, collapsed because it was a bear market. Copies in NFTs, same thing. 95% of these are going to go to zero over the course of the next few years. So find the ones that sparked the movement and follow those teams. And last but most certainly not least, the most conservative approach here is moving into stable coins that have a modest, you know, 5%, 4%, or in some cases like 6% yield on that stable coin, only using ones that are very, very safe and secure, like a USDC that is from Circle or GUSD, which is from Gemini, the exchange, and just making sure that they are, you know, very careful and you read through what they're actually doing with that money because uh, most of them are lending it out and people are using collateralized loans and things like that and margin calls are real in bear markets so just be very cautious and do good risk management there uh, on moving any money into those platforms because you are trading your keys for a small return but one of my favorite people to follow on youtube is bob lucas he is this og trader and i'm not a trader by any means but Bob Lucas really says it well. Um, and in the space, a lot of people just have so much hopium where they're, they're never going to sell. They're just going to hold on forever. And Bob Lucas displays it in a really fantastic way on his channel where he says the US dollar, even though it's inflating at like eight and a half percent, Bitcoin it historically has gone down 80%. So which is worse, the eight and a half percent or 80 plus? So moving into dollars is not bad. It's not the wrong move. And cutting through the noise, like I mentioned previously about ignoring crypto trading Twitter is very important. Not everybody should be trading actively day to day. In fact, the people that get wrecked the most are traders. And that's not talked about enough. But the people that win are the builders and the holders. Those are the two that win and the traders get wrecked. And this happens time and time again. I wanna end this on a positive note. Of course, there are plenty of builders out there. Very, very few have the recognition that they deserve because the hype train came in and got hundreds of millions of dollars and they distracted the world from many of the amazing innovators out there that I have personally met. And it is really exciting to know that the hype is going to dwindle down and these people are going to rise up as the builders. And it's important to know that. I know it's hard with numbers going down, but when you have innovation happening, when this whole space is so nascent and new, you have to support those people and they're about to get better recognized. And I just wanted to leave you with that because it is exciting to see them come up and get more recognition because the loudest hypesters out there are gone. They're on to the next, uh, you know, move and the builders are here to stay and they're going to start getting some more recognition. So that is it for this episode. I hope these five quick tips help do your research, stay mentally healthy, go outside, take walks, breathe, do what's best for your family and never invest any more than you can afford to lose in anything. And that is it for this episode. Slap a like, and I will see you guys on the next episode of Hack Crypto.